Hi friends, this is Sky Carter from Sky Carter Colour and you're watching this video because you've either purchased a weaving kit or maybe you're thinking about purchasing one, in which case the link's below, 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 um, to my website where you can purchase one. I'm also on Etsy, of course. Um, so this is a tutorial for this wall hanging. So it's a wall hanging with the teal and the grey pom-pom. So you should have a box with a sticker like so. And this is what we're going to make. So let's unbox, shall we? So this is the box. Let's have a look at what you get inside, just so we can all be on the same page. Okay, so the first thing, oh, just over here, not in the box. <laughs> um, I just pop in a little sort of um, post weaving tutorial guide. So this will um, have information to direct you to this YouTube tutorial, but it's also kind of got some steps in there once you have done this first wall hanging, if it hypothetically is your first time making a wall hanging, then you've just got little reminder steps so you don't have to come back to a tutorial each time. It just says step one, warp your loom. Step two, create a header and that'll all make more sense to you at the end of the, the weaving tutorial. Um, so that's just a little helpful um, bit of information for you in your ongoing weaving journey. And we're going to be making this little teal and grey number from these elements so we'll have um, we've got this lovely Morrison Sons cotton we've got a light um, sort of grey torpy colour we've got a grey um, wool basically and um, talk about them in a sec I've put in a fluffier grey for the pom-pom and then we've got the teal just for our little teal colour pop. So that these are essentially what you're going to be using um, as well as for those fabulous fluffy cloudy effects which are these ones here. We'll be using the roving and this is available from the Nundle Woolen Mill. You can Google them. And this is a merino and alpaca blend. Um, so it's really kind of raw and organic and sometimes even smells like the farm, which is nice, but disgusting to some apparently. Okay, so I'm popping those back in the box. We'll be working on those in a second. Then um, we've got the tools. So these are, you know, what we create our wall hanging from. So we've got the loom. So you can see the loom creates a work that that size and even a little bit larger if you like. Uh, this is the tension header which helps all our warp threads stand up and away from the loom. That'll make more sense to you as we actually thread the loom. Um, this is the weaving comb, we use that to push our work down and manage the work. This is the stick that we will hang our work from and this is the chunky tapestry needle which will help us obviously with our weaving. So these are the tools that you receive. This little um, ball of mesmerized cotton, I just pop into each of the kits, um, various colors, it's kind of whatever I've ordered from my suppliers. And this is just so you'll have some um, thin yarn to thread your loom for ongoing projects. But for this particular project, we're actually going to be using a yarn to thread our loom with. So that's what you get in the box. Okay, so there are a couple of extra things that you will need um, to bring to the table, so to speak, because I don't provide 1000% everything in the kit. So you'll need some scissors and you'll need to find something that is not dissimilar to this. Um, this is like a little cheapy canvas frame from a $2 shop. And I use this to pre-dispense, or as my template, I suppose, to pre-dispense um, even lengths of yarn. And we'll use this for our fringe. It's approximately 20 centimetres long. So if you can go and find something in your home that is about 20 centimetres long that you can um, use as a template to wrap some yarn around. So we'll be wrapping yarn around this way. Uh, so you can even use, a you know, like a small paperback book or chop up a piece of cardboard um, and then come back to the tutorial and we will start weaving. Okay, so we are ready to start weaving. But the first thing I want to say is Rome wasn't built in a day. So don't pressure yourself to 
kind of get it within, you know, the first second of me explaining something. So you can pause at any time if you feel you need to catch up. And there will be moments where I won't be doing absolutely every single element along with you. And the tutorial is designed to be paused at some point so you can do your bit and then come back. So let's begin, shall we? Okay, so let's grab our loom and we're also going to grab our light grey, slightly torpy yarn uh, to create our warp thread. So I'm just going to find the end of this, which is here, and I'm actually going to place the ball on the floor because we're going to be working with it in a continuous fashion for this particular part of weaving. So I am resting a long piece. Um, a piece that's at least as long as the loom itself through the first notch at the top. It doesn't matter if you start on the left or right hand side, it's whatever feels comfortable for you. And because we're going to be wrapping this all the way around um, the loom in a continuous fashion, we need to create some tension. And um, we do that by anchoring this first warp thread with our fingers or our thumb, whatever feels ergonomically comfortable to you but for me it's fingers so I'll just lean back so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing so this is the front and I'm coming down to the corresponding notch at the bottom I'm back to the back coming up to the next notch down and so on and so forth and you can see I'm still holding on to that first loose one and then I'm just going all the way around like so. So I'm obviously a bit quicker than some. So this is a perfect opportunity to pause if you need to. Cool. Okay, so we've threaded the loom, which is awesome. We've got to secure it at the back. So this is my front and this is my back. And you'll notice that on the back, the warp threads are slightly um, on an angle. That's because they're, they're reaching over to the next notch. And um, this is what we began with, this long thread here. So where we've ended, we're going to um, give that a little snip. So we've got another long piece that we can then diagonally tie across the back of the loom, like so. Let's see if I can do that with these porn star nails. We want to tie it relatively secure, but it doesn't have to be sort of obsessive because the notches do do quite a good job of keeping things in place. Okay, so we want to make sure that this um, these warp threads have enough tension so that when we kind of strum, they're not crisscrossing each other and they just snap back into their, their places, which these have done. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to slip our little tension heddle behind these warp threads and you'll see that that will make them stand up and away from the loom and also create a little bit of extra sort of tension. Um, now you can, there's two ways you can do this. You can kind of lift each one up because we're putting it behind every single one of these warp threads or this is my preferred method. So this loom which I designed myself, by the way. I think I forgot to mention I've designed all these tools. <laughs> um, it's got a little bit of a sort of bend in it. So you can kind of gently bend it and just slip though, uh, that heddle right through the warp threads like so. So that's how I've done it. And I'm just going to lift that up towards the top and just give it a little flip up so we're standing perpendicular away from the loom and there we can see we've got that you know space in there so we've got a nice um, bit of room to work around those warp threads now well done the next step is creating what's referred to as the header and the header is something that um, the whole work sits on it's like the concrete foundation of a house so it's a very important part of the weaving process and from a technical point of view probably one of the few things I kind of harp on about but if you don't have a header you risk your fringe falling off the bottom of your work so that's a disaster 
And we're going to be doing three rows. And the header um, is also a great opportunity to learn and practice plain weave, which is a very, very simple technique and one that you will use many times and is the foundation of all weaving, really. So um, everything that we're wearing is, you know, plain weave. And from here on in, when we're weaving certain numbers of rows of things, and in this circumstance, we're starting with three rows, we're actually going to pre-measure that yarn. And I'll show you what I mean. So, And it's very simply and roughly. Um, so I'm going to do three rows. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And we're using the same yarn that we used to thread the loom with. We're not going to see these rows that we're creating now. They'll, they'll actually be covered by the fringe. So technically speaking, it actually doesn't matter what, um, what you use. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going with the same yarn that we threaded the loom with so i'll just do that once more we're measuring across one two three and you know what? i always give myself just a little bit more because it's better to have a bit too much than to be left short so now we've got our uh, pre-cut length of yarn which will give us three rows at the bottom of our loom this is the bottom and i'm gonna grab my chunky tapestry needle and thread the yarn through just the large hole is fine um, and I'll just quickly talk you through this needle so we've got two holes a large one for chunky material and a small one for finer materials sometimes your finer materials can be quite slippery so I've created an anchor hole at the end here so for example if you do have a material that's quite slippery once you've threaded it you can then slip it through the anchor hole as well and that just gives you a little bit of extra um, tightness in the needle I don't know for want of a better description it's not going to slip out but we don't need that for this particular type of yarn that's just a little tutorial on the needle it's also got a wedge which helps um, assist you in getting under and around those warp threads as well so as a reminder these threads that we've created here are called the warp threads okay Weaving is just merely going over and under every second um, warp thread. So what I want you to do is notice that I'm not weaving right down the bottom here because it's quite tight. I'm weaving up sort of towards the middle. I'm starting under the first warp thread and then I'm going over the next one and so on, so on and so forth. I'm doing that about halfway across, then I'm pulling my needle through and then I'm continuing. The reason that we are weaving a little bit higher on the loom is for two reasons. The first reason is it's very tight down the bottom. And the second reason is we want to um, weave in a relaxed manner. So this yarn is relaxed all the way across. And then instead of kind of tightly pu pushing it down and really kind of, you know, just really tightly stretching it across the loom, um, we actually want to make sure those fibres are nice and relaxed and then just gently ease down on each side to create this natural arch. So I'll just kind of reiterate that again. So we've woven, we've woven across the centre of the loom just once. I've pulled it through until I've got a little tail hanging out the edge and we're actually going to tuck this out of the way in a minute. But before we do that, we're just going to gently pull down to create this natural arch and what this shows us is this is the correct tension um, that we need for weaving so we don't want to be pulling tightly across the loom because if we do we get something called draw in so all the threads will kind of start to draw in like so and you'll have a bit of a warped and not sort of nicely square wall hanging so once we've got that nice shape happening then we can use our comb to just push that down to the very bottom of the loom. I've got a slightly overly loose bit here, so I'm just going to very gently pull it through, but otherwise that is perfectly all right. Okay, so this little um, bugger here, I'm going to just tuck back in to the work. So I'm just tucking it around the edge of that warp thread. So it was sitting under, or oh, sorry, it is sitting under, and now it's going to go around. It's going under that one and I'll just pop it under the next one too. So you can see that I've just kind of woven it around this edge one and then back under those two and that'll sort of disappear into the rest of the work. Okay, we can start our next row now. 
So our warp thread is uh, our weft thread, sorry, is sitting over the top of this end warp thread. So we're going to go under it. And our under over pattern is going to be in the opposite direction to the row below. So same technique applies. I'll just kind of weave across a couple, pull it out and then weave across again. And I'm once again just kind of gently going to pull down. So I just, when it's sitting right around the edge of that warp thread without pulling it in in any way, shape or form, and you can kind of just pull it out a bit just to make sure it's not tugging on it. I put my finger there, I just sort of ease down um, on one side and then once again use my comb to push those warp threads down. And then we're going to repeat that. So where my weft thread is over my, the top of my warp thread or my yarn is over the top of my warp thread, I'm just going to go back under it and just complete that last row that we're going to do for our header. So just pulling through, easing down with that arch, pushing down with our comb, ever so gently push, pulling that through, and we've completed our three rows. So I've got a bit of spare here, and I'm going to trim that, so we've got another nice little tail to tuck in. Please be um, mindful that you want a short tail because if you've got a long tail and you're tucking it in halfway across your work you're pretty much creating another row so be mindful the tails are just meant to be little so they can be tucked in and the um, trick to this tucking element is we're not going to be folding it back over the top we're actually going to be lifting up this corner so we're lifting up the third row and then we're going to be tucking back in between the second and the third rows so I've just gone under and over so can you see what I've done there so instead of flipping it back over the top of that row I've actually just lifted row three so I can sneakily tuck that tail back in between row two and three and then I'm just going to push down so I can use the comb it's a bit easier and you can see that's disappeared into the work. So you can't really sort of see where you've done any tucking. And the, um, the reason that it's good to kind of tuck under the row you've just completed is that when you start at this end, or if you start at this end, or if you start at this end, I should say, the under over rhythm is going to be the same. So you're not kind of be, going to be going under, over, under, over, up, over, over, under, under, if you know what I mean. It might make more sense to you as you start weaving and get into the, the rhythm of the whole thing. Um, but it's a really good habit to get into when you've finished any rows is to lift up the corner, tuck in between the row you've just completed and the row below. I hope all that makes sense. Okay, the next step is to make the fringe. And the fringe hangs off the bottom of the loom. So as you can see, the body of the work starts here. So the header that we've just woven is sitting around this point here and all of the fringe hangs off the bottom of the loom. So this is the back of the loom and then the fringe hangs off like so. All right, so now is the time to grab whatever your version of this approximate 20 centimetre template is so that we can start dispensing the yarn for the fringe. So what we're going to be creating are bundles like so. So this is the first, um, first bundle that we're going to use to create the fringe and I'll show you how that's done. So we're doing it in the same warp thread, uh, sorry, the same thread that we used to warp our loom and also to do the header, which is the light gray, slightly torpy one. Can't come up with a better color description for it. And we're just going to wrap eight times around our template and then chop it off so the reason i like using this is because it actually has a hole in the backs to help you easily chop off so if you're using a bit of cardboard be mindful to not really tightly wrap around it so you've got room to actually get your scissors in there 
and this is my little um, instant bundle that I've created so it's not perfect it's a little bit that I can trim off there so that all of the the bits are um, nice and even I mean maybe I can be even a little bit fastidious and trim that one but I'm to be honest I'm not an overly fastidious weaver so the reason that I'm kind of holding it in the center is when we actually come to apply that you'll see that it's the center um, of the knot that we're going to use to create the fringe so what you will need to do is to dispense five of these and then I'll talk you through where to place them so we're doing five of these bundles and we're doing eight eight in each bundle so I'll just let you go away um, pause this tutorial go away and prepare your um, threads and your bundles and I'll come I'll see you when you've got your uh, five in front of you okay I'm assuming you're back so it's a knot called the Raya knot which is spelled R-Y-A that we use to um, create our fringe our nice sort of shaggy looking fringe and um, we're going to be working from the left to the right hand side of the loom so it's your left as you're holding this loom down in front of you like so so obviously I'm demonstrating kind of a bit upside down and back the front um, so that you can kind of see what I'm doing but so it will might not look like it's working from my left but um, if you start on the left on your left hand side as your loom sits in front of you and then just follow along you should um, make the same wall hanging uh, as in the image and if you don't you're just going to make a mirror image of it so it's no big deal really okay so the Ryan knot let's get on with it Carter come on quick okay so we're going to isolate these first two warp threads and place the center of the bundle over the top then we're going to pull each side through the middle of those two warp threads that we've selected and I'm going to pull through the other side I'll make sure that they're relatively even down the bottom and then I'm pulling down that's it we'll go to the next two across we're going to do the same thing isolate those first two warp threads and place the center of our next bundle over the top pulling each side through the middle of those two warp threads making sure the bundles are relatively even before I pull down so now we should have two just obviously pause if it's if you need to kind of wrap your head around it a little bit more we're actually going to skip the next two because this is where we're going to place a, a teal one and we're going to these two here for our next one now this can feel like a counterintuitive action some people um, kind of just shove behind the warp threads but if you always remember you're placing the center of the bundle over the top of the warp threads and that's the very first step in this process the Raya knot process then the rest should sort of intuitively or naturally follow and I'm just going to once again just even them up like so once again we're going to skip this one and we're going to do on these last two pairs going to do our last two wire knots of this color then we're going to fill in those little gaps that we've created with the other colors and the next two Okay, 
So you should have two on the end, two on the end, and then one in the middle of this particular color. We're going to now put a teal, teal rhino in this space. And we're actually going to use the same yarn for this one, but we're going to use another technique, which is reform right not and I'll show you what I mean so this we'll start with this position actually and because we've been using this all along this um, light gray we'll um, we may as well just sort of finish finish using this one before we head on to the teal so I'm going to create a little bit of a looped um, effect for this rye knot as opposed to a chopped off one and I'll show you what I mean so you can see here that there is this slightly longer loopy section here in the light gray that's hanging down. And that's what we're creating now. So I wanna measure the length of that. So it's gonna be slightly longer. So this is the length of my fringe and then this will be the length of my looped rye knot and where my finger is will be the center of the bundle that we create so knowing that that's the center we need to sort of double that initial length that we measured and this is now the length that we need for this looped rye knot and once again we're going to do eight uh, a thickness of eight but instead of chopping or wrapping around something we're literally just folding it over so getting to the other end, folding over, grabbing them all in your hand, folding over, I've got four, this will be five, six, seven, eight. And I have not overly concerned myself with making sure they're all folded at the exact point because a little bit um, looser and freeform for this technique is a bit... Is a bit nicer so here we now have our bundle slightly longer than our previous bundles and once again I'm holding in the center and I'm isolating the two warp threads that we are popping this in so for you just so you're not confused as you're looking down at your work it's the warp threads on the oh my god I'm confused now on your left hand side so it's three in from the left is where we're placing it, which is here. I was about to put it on the other side. Once again, over the top and pulling each side through the center of those two warp threads, pulling through, not being particularly fussed about them being super even because once again, it's that slight uneven look that we want for this particular loot thread and there we have it a free form baby we're going to do the same thing with the teal now and we're going to make it even a little bit longer because it's a bit more of a feature knot as you can see and this is going to be a thickness of just referring to my piece of paper six so the teal let's grab that it's in a little skein so just gently unravel the skein and you'll have a bundle like so and do be mindful they can get a little bit tangled so just sort of gently pull away the the um the th thread from the bundle and once again we're going to measure how long we sort of want this one and this one we want to sit a, a even a little bit lower um so maybe about that point and that means this is my midpoint which means this is the full length that I need for that folded bundle and we're going to do six for this so I'm folding it over two fold three fold four fold five fold six I'm just going to put that bundle there Isolate the warp threads, place the center of the bundle over the top, pull each side through the middle. Oh, 
and then pull down. And there we have it. We've got the first layer of our fringe. Now we are actually going to put a couple of extra rye knots on top of these, um, but we're not going to do another whole row. For your future projects, if you decide that you're addicted to weaving and you want to make some more wall hangings, if you do do a whole other row, what you do is you skip this first warp thread and you go in between to create your next lot of rye knots. In between. Can you see what I, what I mean? Because you can see there's kind of an opportunity for the next rye knots to sit kind of over the top of that little gap there. So that's how you do it. But for us, we're going to now add a little grey embellishment and a little cotton, um, light, very, very light grey embellishment. And that's just going to break up the fringe a little bit and add a bit of extra interest. So now we're grabbing our purely grey um, thread and we just got to find the middle. That's always fun with these ones. If you do have trouble locating the center, my tip is just to go to one of the outside threads and just pull that and usually, oh, it's like magic, it reveals itself. So we're going to do a gray loop, but it's only gonna be a thin gray loop and it is sitting here. So as you're looking at your loom, it's sitting in, um, you, we're going to skip the first run and go in between the next one. So these two here. It's another looped one and it's another freeform one. So I'm going to very um, approximately measure this one. It kind of doesn't matter because it's just a, a little feature not and we can adjust as well you know we can kind of pull them out and re trim them or resize them if we if we need to and there's also opportunity to trim anything at the end but I just a note on that best not to trim things until your wall hangs actually off the loom because when you see it in situ that's when you have the best idea of how it will look so that's the length I'm going for so I'm just going to double that over and I'm only going to do a thickness of two or four. It's, I'm going to leave this as a personal um, preference, personal choice for you guys. It's nice to have a little bit of control over the design or a little bit of personal input. So as I mentioned, skipping this first one, it's on the opposite side of the teal side, isolating those two warp threads. Popping the bundle through. This is a bit of a slipperier one, this one. And then pulling down. And there's our little grey embellishment. Then we're going to go to the next two across for our lighter um, cotton. Hey, where's it gone? Here it is. It's all right, don't panic. This is um, a 10 ply cotton, this one. And once again, I can't find the end. Oh no, here it is, looks like that's it just there. So that's what you can look for when you're trying to find the end. Sometimes they kind of shove a lot of stuff in the, the back side of the yarn. I'm just going to trim that tangled bit. Okay, and this one we are going to use the um, template and we're going to do eight for this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I misread my notes, sorry, it's fourteen. <laughs> but trust me, I know what I'm doing. So it's fourteen for the cotton. And through the back. So there we've got our cotton and the next two across from the light grey. Pull all those threads through. Sometimes if there's a bundle with quite a few, I do a little twist like so. And it just helps to control them a little bit better and get them around the warp threads. Oh, 
and there we have it. So there we have our completed fringe and we can move on with the next steps. So exciting. So we've completed our fringe, which is fabulous. Actually, I've just noticed I've got a bit of a wayward bit of cotton hanging down there. So I'm trimming, always contradicting myself. I like to keep it exciting. And whenever we do any kind of um, wire knots, even throughout our work, which we will be doing in this particular wall hanging, we like to lock them in with some plain weave or something, but generally some plain weave. So that's what we're going to do with this. We're going to essentially replicate what we did for the header, which is three rows of plain weave. And it's a good opportunity to once again practice our plain weave which is pretty much the foundation of all weaving. And um, we're going back to our grey top, which we used for the warp threads and most of the fringe, this fella. And I'm measuring three across again. So just approximately measuring so I just have enough, I, I, ha I know how much yarn I need as opposed to working with a whole ball. So one, two, three, a little bit more for good measure because I never like to leave myself short. Threading the needle. You can thread through the small hole or the large hole, but this is not a particularly slippery one, so the large hole is fine. And we're just going to start weaving. Um, you can weave sort of down here if you like, but some people do get a bit confused when the warp threads pull the yarn in a bit, it can be a bit confusing. So if you find it easier, you can uh, weave a little bit higher up. So we're going under, over, under, over, like we did in the beginning. And I will just continue. So just as a little refresher, we pull that through until we've got a little tail. We just ease down so we've got that nice natural arc happening, which ensures that we've got the right tension. And now I'm going to push down quite aggressively with my comb because we want to kind of start to work um, our weaving quite sort of firmly towards the bottom. I'm giving my rye knots a little bit of a tug because we want everything to start kind of sitting quite securely. Let's get those out of the way. And then I'm going back and weaving the other way. Once again, I, where I've gone over the end warp thread, I've gone, when I've gone back in the other direction, I've gone under, just so we've got the rhythm happening in the opposite direction to the row below. Just keep my finger there. I'm making sure it's not pulling in the warp thread in any way, shape or form. Keep my finger there. That natural arch has happened. Using my comb to push down, oh, voila, so on and so forth. Finishing our third row. A little bit of an alpaca fibre there. Get out of there, you bugger. Pushing down and giving a little trim. So we've got another tail that we can tuck in. So if you need to just pause to finish those rows before we just have a little revision on the tucking of this last one, by all means, go for it. Pause. And we're back in the room. Okay. So we're going to lift that corner and we're tucking this tail between row three and row two. So it's just a great habit to get into when you finish any number of rows to always tuck this tail underneath the row that you've just completed. So I've got it tucked in there. I'm just easing it all down. Keep in mind also that from this point onwards or anything that goes above the fringe, we see, you know, this is actually part of the design of your work. So the only thing that you don't see is the header that you create in the beginning. But now it's all magical stuff. Okay, speaking of magical, we get to play with the roving now, which is very exciting. So we're going to pop our first couple of rows of clouds in. And it's a very easy technique. It's basically the same technique as plain weave, but we are just using the roving, which I had here. So you're going to get a, quite a long piece of roving and um, quite a thick piece of roving. So it's much thicker than we need to weave with. So we're going to split it into quarters or thirds. It's personal preference because you've got plenty here for 
um, the project that we're working on. Um, but this is a, a bit that's on the thicker side. So I'm going to start by splitting it down the middle and you can see it splits very easily. And then I'm going to split again so that I've got a quarter thickness happening. It's delicate um, roving. So, you know, use delicate fingers. It's not something that can be tugged or pulled at um, very much. And we want to weave lightly with that. And we're using our fingers. So I'll show you um, what the next step is, which is plain weaving the roving using our fingers. So we're going to start by going over the first warp thread and under the next one. And I'm just gently easing that through until we've got a, our first row. My end, sorry about a little bit flary there, sorry. Um, so I've got quite a big tail hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, pull it back a bit. Just to get there so you can, okay, that's better. Okay, so... This is the continuous length of my roving hanging out this way. It doesn't matter which side you're working from for this particular um, element. And then I'm pulling through a loop. So I'm kind of then pulling the roving through. So I get these little cloudy notches. So you can see them starting to to form and I'm just going to ease them down to the bottom and you can have a little play with them so that you get them to the size that you desire. With this um, tail we're going to like we did for the yarn we're just going to tuck it back. The roving really kind of melts into itself so you don't have to be too kind of pedantic or finicky with it and that's pretty much what I'm what I've done with my tucking but I've taken advantage of um, leaving a little kind of extra cloudy bump out the side because there was enough to to do that with okay so then we can come back the other way with this length so where we've gone over the top of this warp thread we then want to go back in the opposite direction by going under and we don't want to pull it in pull it so tight that um, we, this is flat against the warp thread you know once again we want there to be a little kind of bulby cloudy edge and then we just continue with that over under pattern and you can kind of weave it straight all the way across and then go back and pull through but i'm going to just kind of pull the little bobbles through as i go Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. And then the tail is being tucked back. Uh, it doesn't matter that it's not being tucked under or over. It doesn't really matter because, as you can see, it just really kind of melts into itself. So there we have two lovely rows of clouds, which has created this bottom section so we're this far up our work already which is amaze balls so the next step is um is some more plain weave and we're going to be using the cotton this time and the cotton is this one and you'll see that it's quite a fine um fine thickness so uh what we're going to do is actually make it thicker and this is a good tip for any kind of future um, weaving that you might do is if you've got something that's too thin well you can just kind of double it over and make it a bit thicker but in this circumstance we're actually going to make it a thickness of four and weave that like it's one and we're going to be doing seven rows so let's measure one two three four five six Seven and a little bit more for good measure and like we did for the looped riot we're just folding over and just sort of holding the two lengths together so that's a thickness of two there then we're going to go back the other way to get three just accidentally dragged that with me so that's three and this will be number four that we're doing now and trim 
Now, if you find that is a confusing concept, you can just me measure seven and then do four separate measurements of seven rows and then just hold them all together like so. It doesn't really matter as long as we kind of get to the same, same point. It doesn't matter how you get there and that happens a lot in weaving. Okay, so we're going to consider this like one um, piece of yarn that we're going to weave and the large hole is good for this so I'm just going to pop just do a little twist so we can kind of get them all through there we go so there we have my um, length of seven rows thickness of four and we're ready to start weaving. So if you need to pause to kind of get your materials all together, go for it. Um, and back in the room, all right, let's start weaving. So it doesn't matter if you start under or over at this point, but we are just doing the plain weave. We're pulling through until we have a little tail. So we're just really getting into the habit of always tucking our tail in at the beginning and at the end. Because um, the most common mistake I see is people um, leaving, like just forgetting that step of the process because they're wrapping their heads around other things. Having said the dirty word mistake, my philosophy is mistakes are magic and um, you can invent and create your own weaving style and techniques and um, patterns and rhythms through play and exploration and mistake making so um, I suppose I'm just sort of giving you some technical guidelines and then you can take it from here which is what I essentially did in my practice okay so we're doing seven of those so how about I just stop and come back when I've finished and we'll all be on the same page.